Joining me now is Sandy Berger, co-chair of the Albright Stonebridge Group in Washington, former national security advisor under President Bill Clinton, and a strong and active advocate of the Iran nuclear deal. Thank you, sir, for being on the program just days before the first vote in Congress. Now, in no other country that was part of the P5 plus 1 process is there such a vicious arm twisting going on between supporters and opponents of the deal. Why do you think that is? Is it because of Israel's influence or is it just the usual knee-jerk reaction of an anti-Obama Republican Congress? Well, there is certainly an element of partisanship in it, but I, I think we have a different recent history with Iran uh, than Europe. Uh, we had a very close relationship with the Shah through the 50s, 60s, uh, and then in 1979, uh, the Iranian Revolution, uh, Americans held hostage. That was a traumatic event. For 440 days, uh, Americans were fixated on those Americans in the embassy. It made a very searing impression on the American consciousness. So uh, starting off here, Iran uh, is suspect uh, among, the, among the American people. Uh, I, I think second, I think we have a uh, feel some sense of responsibility in terms of the stability of, of the region uh, and uh, concerns about that. And there are, there are many people uh, here who are spe specifically concerned about Israel's security. Uh, and questions that have been raised about whether this agreement would have a particularly adverse effect on Israel. So it's a combination of those things. The main argument of the opponents of the deal is that Iran will only gain time, um, 15 years roughly, uh, will only be benefiting from sanctions relief, using that money to sponsor international terrorism, and will be cheating anyway. So the argument goes, that's why the deal has to be renegotiated. What's your response to that? So for 15 years or more, uh, Iran uh, has prevented from uh, obtaining a, a nuclear weapon. Uh, all of the compliance that Iran is obligated to do, it does before it gets any sanctions relief. Uh, and so the benefits of this agreement very much are up front. Obviously, the Iranian economy will, will uh, benefit if sanctions are uh, relieved, but there's about a one trillion dollar hole in the Iranian economy right now after these sanctions. Uh, the Iranian economy is in very, very bad shape. So will some of it get diverted into other activities in the region? Undoubtedly, and I think that has to be a very high concern for us and our allies. Congress does not have the power to kill the deal, but it can play the role of a spoiler. It can refuse to let the president lift the sanctions. Do you believe the administration can build enough support to prevent Congress from being a spoiler and build a strong enough veto-proof voting block? Well, that's exactly where we are right now. Uh, it requires 34 votes uh, in the Senate to override a president's veto. It would require 41 votes, actually, to not even have it go to the president which I think the administration would prefer. I think that's probably unlikely. Uh, I think there's movement uh, in the direction of the agreement. I think as people have looked at this war, and I'd, I would say most senators and congressmen have spent serious time uh, looking at this agreement over the, over the summer. Uh, I think there's been movement towards the agreement, but I don't think uh, anybody uh, at the White House at this point is, is uh, holding up any kind of a victory flag. If Congress rejects the deal, what would be the consequences for U.S. foreign policy going forward? The United States has taken the lead on this issue from the very beginning. The United States built the coalition, uh, economic uh, coalition of sanctions over three years, uh, from China to Russia to India to Europe. Uh, we've taken the lead in these negotiations along with our European partners. Uh, I think for us now, uh, it's any sense to uh, forego that leadership, I think, would be a very, a very bad mistake for America's leadership, not only on this issue, but uh, on, on issues going forward. And I would say one last thing. You know, once this agreement is approved, then it's got to be implemented. And I think we obviously want to go into that implementation period 
uh, in a strong position as the United States and as the P5 plus one, because there will be questions that arise going down the, down the line. So we want to go into this in a strengthened position. In Europe, the Iran issue is basically settled, and sanctions are considered a diplomatic tool, a means to an end. Now, many Europeans find the shrill tone of the debate in the United States disturbing. Are you worried about global sanction unity if Congress rejects the deal? Absolutely. I, I think it would be extremely difficult uh, to hold the sanctions regime together uh, if the Congress defeated this. You know, the countries of the world went along with sanctions, Europeans and others, as a means of getting Iran to the table to negotiate seriously on their nuclear program. They came to the table, they negotiated seriously. I think it was extremely difficult then to go back to these same countries and say, well, our Congress didn't like it, so we have to keep the sanctions going for another six months or a year. Uh, I, I find it very hard to, to envision European leaders talking to their CEOs saying, sorry, you can't go into Iran yet because of American politics. I think the fact is uh, it will uh, uh, unravel the sanctions if we were to defeat this. You just mentioned European companies. We're already seeing a big rush uh, of European companies into Iran, companies from Italy, from Germany. We're not seeing American companies doing the same thing. Um, why are American companies not drumming up support, stronger support in favor of the deal? I think our uh, sanctions against Iran uh, go way beyond the nuclear sanctions. We've essentially had an embargo on Iran trade since 1979. And our concerns about Iran are not just its nuclear program. We're concerned with its terrorism. Uh, we're concerned with the activities that it has in the region to undermine its neighbors. Uh, so I think our sanctions regime will be more difficult to undo uh, than a European sanctions. And finally, if the deal goes through, and it looks like it will, what will that mean to the Obama foreign policy legacy? Well, I think this is an uh, extraordinary uh, historic agreement. Uh, one doesn't even have to accept the proposition that this will change Iran fundamentally, uh, turn it into a peaceful neighbor, transform its leadership from being revolutionary to being moderate. You don't even have to accept that to recognize how profound this is. What it will do is take the nuclear weapon out of the equation. All the concerns we have about Iran are more dangerous with a nuclear, with a nuclear on than a non-nuclear on. Mr. Berger, thank you so much for breaking it all down for us. Thank you.